<laughs> hey, hey, hey. Praise God. Praise Him. Praise Him. Let's get down in prayer first. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we come unto you. Just lifting you up on high, Lord. Just praise you and glorify you, Lord. Because you say that you're worthy of your praise and glory. Father God, Lord, you say, Lord, if I would be lifted, that you would do the drawing. Father God, Lord, as I humble myself, Lord, down. Let them see more of you and less of me. Father God, I pray that your word of God, Lord, have free course. Build up where they may be weak at, Lord. Restore in the mighty name of Jesus. I loose blessings down from heaven. In Jesus' holy name, Lord. Amen and amen. We're going to go back. Second Timothy. The third chapter. The 16th verse. And it say, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it is profitable for the doctrine, for reproving, I mean reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That means this is what Timothy was saying. That it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correction, and training in righteousness. I named this here what seems to be over just a, is, is just a new beginning. John 15 and 2. Want to read it for me? John 15 and 2 say, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. See, Jesus, in that chapter there, in that verse, Jesus, Jesus is speaking. Jesus, at the first, say, first verse, you say that, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. He said, every branch that is not in me, that is not fruitful, he get rid of them. But, but, but when you bear fruit and he's in you, well, he prunes you, he trims you up. And so that speaks to a lot of hard times that, you know, we face today. Right. If you bear fruit, you will be purged. But it is not God's intention for you to fall into a place or into a pit in life and feel like he can't bring you back up. Right, right. It's meant to help you to build up your faith so that you can succeed in his will. Right. Uh, I had to write this down. Because there's some someone out there has been feeling day by day that you are running in, place. in places mm -hmm. that you're not getting anywhere. Then there was moments where your hopes and dreams, you feel like it was over. Well, I just stopped by to tell you this here, my brothers and sisters. It's, it's only the beginning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Isaiah 43 and 19 say, you want to turn that to me? No. The devil wants you to feel like that your hopes are dreams, that your prayer is not being answered. But your prayers is being answered. And Isaiah 40, 
43 and 19. Verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God is speaking to your dry places. Okay, the dry places that is in our lives. He say that he's going to do a new thing. So that means so that, mean that the old things that we was doing have to be gone. We have to get rid of them. He's going to do a new thing in your dry desert. And I, and I like the way that they explain. You see, I am doing a new thing. Now it sprang up. Do you not perceive it? He said, I'm making a way in the desert and a stream in the wasteland. Oh, boy, boy, we said, uh, a, a good daddy, boy. <laughs> That's all I can say. We, we serve a good daddy. No, he's speaking to somebody out there. <clears throat> he's speaking to someone out there. And I want to <clears throat> share this here with y'all, whoever it may be. He came to y'all, and many of us. And I myself have to put me and my wife, we have to put ourselves in check. Tell that flesh, get down. And uh, it's constantly that we have to remind ourselves and remind this flesh that we cannot go back to the old day. We got to you know, do you know, the sin for God to be able to do the new thing, we have to get rid of sin. We have to get rid of doubt. I think it was something that my wife shared with y'all that God gave her, what that was, you said, or, or, or for us to walk into the things of God, mm -hmm. we have to leave mm -hmm. no doubt mm -hmm. behind us. No we as children of God, we should want to walk in the fullness. We should want to walk into the things of God. He say in Luke 5, if you turn to it, this is the part that Luke 5. I should have it more down. Mm. Look fine, baby. Hold on, I want to. I'm getting there. This is when Jesus had came and he was speaking and he saw this was when Peter no was they was at the they been out there fishing all day tolling. Excuse me. And uh can you pick it up at the full verse for us? Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Lunch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Go on to the field first. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Six verse. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their <clears throat> net break. And Sorry. they beckoned unto their parents, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. Did you see? Did, did you see and hear the blessing in that? Mm -hmm. The revelation by standing on the word. He say that now, when he had left, he spoke and saying unto Simon, "Launch into the deep mm -hmm. and let down your neck for a drought." Mm -hmm. 
what he was talking about, let down your faith. Mm -hmm. Launch your faith. Yes. Ooh. Out into the deep. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yes. No, Lord, no, many of us, we want the blessings, but we don't want to launch our faith out, just as Jesus said, launch out your, launch out into the deep and your neck for a, for a drought. Now, just like many of us, people say, oh man, we've been out here doing this. Oh Lord, we, I try to get this here. I try to get that there. I try, it just ain't working. God's word is yes and amen. Baby, I'm sorry. I'm over here burning up on fire. I got to say this. <laughs> the Lord had you to say that right on time for this to be safe. <laughs> you got to get it. Huh? I got to get it. <laughs> I know who this is for. <laughs> but please know that God does not like to be reminded of all the times that things did not line up the way that it was supposed to line up originally. Just like right here. Simon could have went on and he could have kept bringing up how it didn't work for them right. all the many times that they tried. But he didn't do that. No. He stood on what no. God told him to do. Nevertheless, I don't know who this is for, but God is reminding me of David with the census. David went and took up a census to number Israel. Israel was never supposed to be numbered because from the beginning, it was spoken that there would be so many of them that they would not be able to be counted. When David took up that census, it was just like he was putting God to open shame, a reminder as to how long it took for God's prophecy to come to pass. Sometimes things don't move in the speed that we want it to move, but no matter how long it takes, we are supposed to stand on God's word and keep our lives in line with his word so that when that time comes, it can move. It wasn't that God had lied about the count because there were supposed to be many, but remember along the way, all the sin that Israel was doing during that time, it hindered God's hand from being able to be moved. And I'm going to leave that right there because that, that can go on. It's really deep. It's really deep. Go ahead, baby. I'm sorry. And I had to be obedient. It was just like <sighs> it was just like when Jesus told Simon, you know, and this is the way that we sound. Oh, Lord, we told all night. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? Then he say that, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish in their net. Cause you know why? They launched their they launched their faith into the into the net. I mean, into the water. They let down their faith. So I also wrote. Brothers and sisters, step out of faith because what seems over in your life is just a a prelude, is a, a product to a new beginning. First mm -hmm. Corinthians 2 and 9. Can you turn? Okay. Let's read that. 2 and 9. First Corinthians 2 and 9. Okay. <clears throat> but as it is written, I have eyes have not seen, Amen. ears have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 
Amen. And I had to do, I had to ask you all to explain that, you know, to give me a little bit more into that. Mm -hmm. And this is what he said for since the world began, no ills have heard and no eyes have seen a God like you who work for those who wait for oh, him. Yeah. See many, see many times that we we be so anxious, no wanna. No, I'm gonna give you a good example. Me and my wife. My wife have a problem when I first met her, and here she go right here. God will, God couldn't tell her everything because once she figured it out, I'm going ahead. She going ahead. She's she's all right. Go bye. I don't need you now. Gone gone. <laughs> Like that, I just I thought I knew, and every time she missed it, I ain't no nothing. I was way off. I was so, way off. so that's like with us. <clears throat> no, he say, Who work for those who wait for him? Mm -hmm. Way up on the Lord. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is for somebody out here. We're trying to encourage you, the body, of, the body of Christ. We, like me and my wife, no, no, I have a cousin, and she, I guess she said, them two sound like hands on the hands on the phone. But we be shopping, iron shopping iron. And me, with me and my wife, I thank God for. We be shopping, I guess with her, we be shopping no uh, spills and stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but uh thank God for but God again what seems like it was over it's just a new beginning. God wanna do a new thing. Not only in one person, but all our lives. If we allow him, if we will take out the time, and you get them proud of her, many of us that many of us that been on here as we spoke, and God always have me to say, if we will take out the time and seek God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And all his righteousness. Everything will be added. On. Everything will be added. So with this here, wife, do you have anything you want to say? I, I'm done. Because <laughs> <laughs> mine could go on all night. I'm yeah. just sensing. Um, <laughs> I want to pray for everyone something. Okay. Oh, uh, there's a lot of marriages that the devil had those seeds mm -hmm. out there. And this is in my spirit. It just, just came into my spirit. And I want to be obedient. Mm -hmm. That breaking up. Brother, let me share something with you. Sister, I God gonna get with you right after this year. But brother, the word of God say when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. We don't get this twisted. Just because we are the man in the house, God is the head of us. We are priests in the house. So then, by us being priests in the house, we have to submit ourselves to the Father, which is Jesus Christ. 
Now for you, now for that woman to, to submit to you, you have to be submitted to God. Mm-hmm. See, it's a, it's a, it walk hand in hand. Yes. And a lot of guys take this twist. Oh, just because I'm a man, you supposed to do? No, I didn't read that. The man supposed to love his wife like Christ. Love the church with agape love. Yes. I remember way before that we uh, we were just getting into the word and God you knows we was reading the word. And I remember the cable man came out there and my wife popped me in my back. Why do you got a brain? <laughs> now any other man probably will bam 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 bam. <laughs> I just walked on off. <laughs> and she could never understand that. Because you know why? God took me, God already had gave me that level. That's your wife. That's you. And y'all, this was way back before I uh, got to where I'm at now. <laughs> no, but it just, no, the point what I'm trying to say is that just because she's the weaker vessel, don't take advantage over that. Now, the woman, if you the head, how can she be a follower when you not even a leader? I have kids up in here right now who say, they say if you don't work, you don't eat. You are her provider. No, she's not your provider. So I want to say this here. When a man and a woman, they're supposed to cleave to each other. And I want to share this here right now, and I want to pray. And I speak over every marriage. Over every marriage that is being attacked. And man, and confusions in it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you, Satan, to take your hands to, and to come out of the marriage. Father God, Lord, I loose thy angels and I loose the blood of Jesus Christ into marriage to minister unto the husband, to minister unto the wife. What the little what the little kids see yes. is what you put into them. Yes. Father God, I loose your blessing, I loose your anointing in the homes. Minister unto that man. Minister unto that woman. You out there shacking up. You out there. You out there adultery. Have a whole wife at the house. And you out there messing with that other woman. You woman out there have a whole man at the house. And you messing with that man out there. That married man. That sin. God would not honor that. God would not bless that. That's a trick of the devil. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask for a fresh anointing over the marriages. Anoint them. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Amen. I pray that the word of God has been a blessing unto you yes. as well. It was with me and my wife. Because, like I say, this is 24-7 with me. This is what you get all all day. (laughs) I could be asleep. Come here, broach. (laughs) Vice versa. That's every day. And I never thought that I would be such happy. (laughs) So happy, so happy. (laughs) Though... So I pray that the word of God be no have blessed y'all. You have everything you want to say before we leave? No. 
Okay. That's everything. Okay. Y'all have a good night and y'all be blessed. Night night.